This is Harvard. You may have heard of it. Elle Woods went here, I think. The best part about Harvard, if you ask me, isn't the fact that freshmen get to eat their food in the coolest dining hall ever. It isn't the fact that you'll receive a prestigious education that can land you a job in the Supreme Court. What, like it's hard? The best part of Harvard is that it's super accessible by transit. You didn't see that one coming, did you? Harvard Station is served by the MBTA Red Line. The station itself has an interesting layout. The boarding area is divided into two floors. The top floor serves trains headed to Alewife, while the bottom platform is used by trains bound for Braintree and Ashmont. But did you know, in this same underground station, there is a bus station with the exact same setup. Multiple bus routes use a bus-only tunnel to access the underground bus station. The top floor is for northbound buses, and the bottom floor is for southbound buses. When I visited this tunnel, it was May of 2022. The buses using the tunnel were regular diesel buses. But look up there. Are those electric wires? Just two months earlier, in March of 2022, these routes were run by trolley buses. What is a trolley bus? It's not whatever this is. Instead, it is a bus that gets its power from electric wires hanging above the bus. The bus makes contact with the electric wire using two trolley poles similar to many historic streetcars around the world. You can probably see where they got the name trolley bus from. The first trolley bus in Boston ran in 1936, right here in Harvard. In March of 2022, the MBTA pulled the plug on the Harvard trolley buses, replacing them with diesels. For the next year, Bostonians needing to satisfy their cravings for a trolley bus ride could take the Silver Line. This BRT connects different areas in the Boston Harbor, like the airport, with Boston South Station. They were cool because they ran on diesel power until Silver Line Way. There, the trolley poles went up and the buses continued through a special bus tunnel on electric power. Well, it's July 2023, and the Silver Line trolley buses look like this. They too have been replaced, this time by battery electric buses. With that, the era of trolley buses in Boston, which lasted almost 90 years, has come to an end. Looking around the world, this seems to be a trend. Many cities used to have trolley buses. Today, the number of remaining systems is quite a bit smaller. Japan replaced one of its last two systems in 2018. In Europe, cities like Arnhem in the Netherlands, Linz in Austria, or Budapest in Hungary continue to operate them. So what's the big disadvantage of trolley buses? Well, they need to stay connected to trolley wires in order to move. Unless you use a dual mode bus like the Silver Line in Boston, this limits the range of a trolley bus to where the wires are making reroutes really difficult to do. Furthermore, a trolley bus can't pass a slower bus or a parked vehicle in front of it either, except if the wires allow it. With gas-powered buses being mass-produced and easily available, as well as more flexible, they appear to be the more economic option for transit agencies. With the last of Boston's trolley buses now history, it whittles the number of trolley bus systems in the US down to four. Now, I haven't been on the trolley buses in Philadelphia, and I've never even been to Dayton, Ohio, but I did just recently come back from a trip to San Francisco and Seattle, and these two places are examples of cities that go against the grain when it comes to trolley bus trends. Let me explain. San Francisco boasts the largest trolley bus network in the US. The first line opened in 1935, and today there are 14 routes that use trolley bus technology. There were 16 before the pandemic. Muni, the agency that runs them, has a fleet of over 300 trolley buses. In 2022, they were used by 33 million passengers. Those are some impressive numbers. Here are two random facts about the trolley buses in San Francisco. One is that on Market Street, trolley buses share overhead wires with the classic streetcars of the F Line. Now that's killing two birds with one stone.
second, let's take a look at routes 5 and 5R. Both run down Fulton Street, with the 5R being a rapid service that makes less stops. The 5R only runs on weekdays between 7am and 7pm. It exclusively uses trolleybuses. The Local 5 uses trolleybuses in the evenings as well as on the weekends. However, during the hours where the 5R is running, the 5 switches to regular gas-powered buses. As you can see, San Francisco is a city where the trolley bus is a widely used mode of public transportation. 900 miles to the north lies the trolley bus network of Seattle, Washington. While most cities have taken down their wires, Seattle's trolley bus history went quite differently. The first line opened in 1940, though a demonstration had taken place in 1937. The network today is 68 miles long with 15 routes. It was used by about 9 million people in 2022, so quite a bit less than San Francisco, but it is an unmistakable part of the Seattle transit scene. In the 1960s, the city began to dismantle much of the system. By 1964, only 30 miles remained, as well as less than 60 vehicles. This was met with large protests. The city claimed that converting to gas was cheaper, but they gave in to the demands of the protesters and allowed an independent study to take place. The study concluded that the costs were pretty much the same and that the trolley buses actually performed better on the city's hills. As the 1973 oil crisis set in, the city agreed to double the length and fleet. In the 1980s, construction was complete and a new fleet of trolley buses was running including the nation's first articulated trolley buses. But in the 2000s, the fleet was aging. King County Metro converted some diesel buses into trolley buses, but they had to make a choice again. Did trolley buses have a future in Seattle? The answer was a resounding yes. Together with San Francisco, they placed a large order for trolley buses with New Flyer, and these are the buses we see today. The trolley buses in Seattle carry a special livery with purple on top of yellow. So why are the trolley buses in these two cities so successful? Well, what's something that both San Francisco and Seattle have in common? Yes, they both start with the letter S. Great job, that's very observant of you. But also, they are both incredibly hilly. Sure, we may have walked up Lombard Street, and we did enjoy the occasional evening stroll through Capitol Hill, but having something else conquer the steep slopes for us is much nicer, of course. Trolley buses are very well equipped to travel up steep inclines, and while it's not the only explanation for their popularity in these two cities, it certainly is a contributing factor. In fact, Route 24 in San Francisco has the steepest gradient of any trolley bus in the entire world, at 22.8%. There are some more advantages to trolley buses. Their electric motors allow them to accelerate faster. These days, they also make use of regenerative braking, which can lead to serious reductions in an agency's energy costs. The electric equipment takes up a little less space than an engine, so there's a little bit more capacity. Furthermore, if the power for the overhead wires is generated cleanly, it can be a practically emissions-free mode of transport, even cleaner than battery-powered vehicles. Trolley buses can be a strong asset in a city's plan to cut emissions. Finally, they're just cool. If that doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. I hope to add more trolley bus systems to my personal transit portfolio in the future. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a lot more content coming from both San Francisco and Seattle, so please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.